My name is Dimu. I'm an artist and I work with a crossover between art and science, which means that uh, I use scientific tools, concepts, methods to um, make art. Like Vincent van Gogh had a, a brush to paint, uh, I use science as my brush to make a portrait or picture. This is not just Demet's vision of what Van Gogh's ear might have looked like. It is as close a copy as you can get over a century after his death. It is a living organism kept alive in a nutrient-rich gel in a big oxygen tank. The hope is it will live for around 80 years. That's a lot longer than the original. Creating this piece was, of course, no easy feat. The form of the sculpture was 3D printed using biodegradable polymer from a model built from the only existing photograph of Vincent's ear. But Dima didn't just want a copy of the ear. She wanted it to be made from Van Gogh himself, from his DNA. First try was this letter, believed to have been written by the artist. But unfortunately, the postman messed it up. So we got the genetic information of the postman, likely, rather than Vincent's. So in the absence of actual DNA, Demet reached out for the next best thing, a living relative, Liwa van Gogh, a direct descendant of Vincent's brother, Theo. Liwa and Demet invited us to watch as they both had small pieces of cartilage removed from their ears to provide DNA to grow living cells. Exclusive access, yes. Pleasant to film, no. As the cells grew, the biodegradable 3D mold dissolved. The result, a fleshy sculpture that changes and matures with time. You got a lot of people who say to themselves, like, yeah, you should preserve art and, and, and really keep it in its, in its own original way. And the thing we are doing now is really, like, revolutionary. You know, it hasn't been done yet. And what is a living ear if it can't listen or process sound? So here's someone worth listening to, Noam Chomsky, the legendary linguist who was invited to talk to Van Gogh's ear during the installation's unveiling in Germany last summer. His words were processed by a computer and the crackling noise it produced was played back on speakers representing the nerve impulses that the ear was hearing. So I would like uh, Mr. Van Gogh's original to explain to us what he had in mind when he cut off his ear. Was it to illustrate the platonic idea that the great art has an element of madness? I had a chance to talk to Van Gogh, which is a rare experience. <laughs> Couldn't believe it would work, but I was curious. And uh, both from a scientific point of view, is it scientifically feasible? And secondly, from uh, on the aesthetic dimension, exactly what is being achieved by the uh, effort to reconstruct uh, and goes here. And believe it or not, this is not the most far-flung project Straber's embarked on. This month, Italian astronaut Samantha Cristoforetti will be taking this into space and letting it float into the void. Inspired by science and built to represent the Gaussian beam method and double slit experiment, this miniature telescope is Demet's second artwork to be sent into orbit. Everybody knows to get something in space is incredible, terribly difficult. So I'm super happy that I got to this point. So I think this process of involving science is a significant feature of current times. <laughs>